Welcome to this third and final video on algebraic centralities. In the last video we talked about bonus stitches eigenvector centrality, which works well on undirected networks. Today we will talk about cat's centrality, which can be a better choice for directed networks. Here is a high-level summary of the previous videos. We are looking at definitions of centrality that are like degree centrality with a feedback loop. In other words, a vertex can be important because it has many neighbors, or a vertex can be important because its neighbors are important. Using the wonders of linear algebra, we find that these importance scores converge to the entries of the dominant eigenvector of a particular matrix. The subject of this video is Katz centrality. Here is part of the abstract from Katz's original paper about influence in social networks. To measure popularity, he wants to take into account both the quality of the connections and the quantity of the connections. He also wants attenuation of influence. This means that the importance boost of a quality vertex should decay as distance increases. Fair enough. In order to motivate the need for Katz centrality, we will look at eigenvector centrality on directed networks. First, let's recap what we learned about eigenvector centrality in the last video. The eigenvector centrality score for vertex i is equal to the ith entry of the dominant eigenvector of the adjacency matrix. These eigenvector entries are actually the limiting values for the following process. Recursively update your power to be the sum of the power of your neighbors. So having large eigenvector centrality either means that you have lots of neighbors or you have neighbors who are themselves important. By looking at an example, we will see that eigenvector centrality has some undesirable behaviors on directed networks. Actually, eigenvector centrality works pretty well on a strongly connected digraph. However, it can have problems on digraphs that are weakly connected. In particular, a vertex with high in-degree may end up with a very low score after applying our recursive update rule. That is certainly not the behavior that we're looking for. Here is our example of a disappointing outcome from our update rule. As a reminder, every vertex starts with power equal to 1. In each round, we update the power of a vertex to be the sum of the power of its neighbors. Pause the video and calculate four rounds using this recursive update rule for this digraph. Watch what happens and explain why I refer to this as a power leak. All right, I've calculated six iterations of the power update rule so that we can see the full effect. You can see that after these rounds, all of the power has been removed from this directed network. The fundamental problem is twofold. First, all the power in vertex 3 gets thrown away. Second, all walks eventually lead to vertex 3. In fact, graphs like this have a name. This is an acyclic digraph. An acyclic digraph is a directed network that doesn't have any directed cycles. The power completely leaks out of this acyclic digraph. Nothing feeds into vertex 1 so it zeroes out after the first iteration. But this has repercussions. In round two, no power feeds into two. And in round three, vertex four gets no power, and so on. By round six, all of the power is gone, having leaked out of vertex three without replacement. In summary, this acyclic example reveals a drawback of eigenvector centrality on some directed networks. More generally, there are weakly connected digraphs in which the power can leak away from parts of the network. There are plenty of real-world networks that have these sorts of weakly connected structures. One prominent example of an acyclic digraph is the citation network between papers. So we do need a centrality measure that is more robust against power leaks so that we can analyze real-world networks. Here is a simple adaptation that fixes the power leak. We give every vertex some small value, some inherent importance in each round. 
This way we are always injecting a constant amount of importance into the network. In terms of a matrix equation, we pick constants alpha and beta, and update our importance score to be alpha times the importance of my neighbors, plus beta times my inherent importance. When this converges, we can solve for our importance vector x. So how do we choose the values for alpha and beta? Well, these constants reflect our relative weighting of inherent importance versus importance granted by our neighbors. So the relative size of alpha and beta is all that matters. So let's take beta equal 1 for convenience. This gives us cat's centrality. Note that we must deal with one technical condition. The matrix I minus alpha A must be invertible. And we must choose a value for alpha that makes this so. Keeping that in mind, what value should we choose for alpha? Well, if alpha is equal to zero, then our matrix equation becomes x is equal to i minus zero times the ve vector one, which is just the vector one. So all of the centralities are one, meaning that only inherent importance matters, and that's not very interesting. As we increase alpha, the centralities become more meaningful. However, when alpha reaches 1 over lambda 1, the largest eigenvalue, the matrix is no longer invertible. Let's see why that's true. In this case, the matrix becomes i minus 1 over alpha 1 times a transpose. And now the eigenvector for eigenvalue lambda 1 becomes an eigenvector for this new matrix but for eigenvalue 0. So we end up taking a value for alpha that's between 0 and 1 over lambda 1. And in practice, we take alpha to be just below 1 over lambda 1. This makes our resulting scores similar to eigenvector centrality. So here is our official definition of cat's centrality. This definition adapts eigenvector centrality for weakly connected networks. Our update rule for cat's centrality is that your new importance is 1 plus alpha times the importance of your neighbors. And here alpha is chosen to be a value that is just below 1 over the dominant eigenvalue of the adjacency matrix A. Let's return to our motivating example. Here are the cat's centralities for alpha is equal to 1 half, and as you would expect, vertex 3 gets the highest score, followed by vertex 6. Now let's talk about one drawback to cat's centrality in a digraph. Suppose that a vertex V is important, and let's consider a bunch of leaves linked to this vertex. What happens if the leaves point towards V? And what happens if the leaves point away from V? Pause the video and think about what their cat's centrality scores would be. All right, let's talk about the leaf conundrum of cat's centrality. Leaves that point towards V have low cat's centrality. That makes sense since no vertex is pointing at them. But what about leaves that V points towards? These leaves get credit for all of V's importance, even though they are peripheral to the network. One way to fix this is to change our update rule so that V does not pass along its full centrality value to each of its neighbors. Here is a guiding example. Google is a very important website, and this website points to millions or maybe billions of web pages. Does that make all of those web pages important? Well, probably not. So here's the solution. Rather than passing on its full importance to each neighbor, we should instead pass along each neighbor's fair share of V's importance. So in our update rule, let's divide vertex J's importance equally among all of its out neighbors. We also need to decide the relative weighting of self-importance versus the neighbor boost. And that's again this alpha versus beta.
In fact, this update rule, which spreads importance among your neighbors and adds a sprinkle of self-importance, was devised in an entirely other setting by Larry Page and Sergey Brin. For an appropriate choice of constants, we actually get page rank, the formative idea that led to the founding of Google in 1998. We will cover page rank in more depth in a future video. This brings us to the end of our videos on algebraic centralities. We fully developed the ideas of eigenvector centrality for undirected graphs and Katz centrality for directed graphs. Each of them uses a feedback loop to define importance using the importance of your neighbors. Katz centrality also gives each vertex a self-importance boost. This fixes the power leak that occurs for eigenvector centrality on weakly connected digraphs. Finally, we observe that giving each neighbor their fair share of a vertex's importance, rather than passing along the full value to every neighbor, is a good idea in some applications. In particular, this brings us to the same formula used for page rank, the most famous centrality measure of them all.